Hey YouTube, today we're doing an advanced DNF dual guide. So why listen to me? Well, besides the fact that I've won the last six DNF events that I've entered, actually that's the only reason you should listen to me. But today we're gonna talk about something that I see high level tournament players still not doing, and it's stuff that you can implement into your game to get good. First, I wanna talk about defense. The number one thing that just blows my mind, I don't understand why people do this, they mash on tech throw. And teching throw is not a very good option in this game for many different reasons, right? Throws only do 75 damage. And this other 75 is gray health. The bad part about giving someone gray health is that they're at advantage because they can just press a button, conversion, and take their turn and then you can just lose the game off of that right so as a hitman or enchantress player i pretty much never throw because hitman has a, is overhead enchantress has a command grab but you know sometimes you, you play a character without mix up you do have to throw occasionally but teching the throw is almost never worth it you can't tech on reaction the throw window is super small in this game i've heard it's like five frames or something crazy like that so like you have to tech to them running forward and sometimes you can get it because you're basically zero after the, the tech. So if you're a character with like really slow buttons, like let's say Ranger or Crusader, even if you tech the grab, you're still at disadvantage. There's basically no point in teching the grab there because Hitman can just press 2A or 5A and keep his turn advantage, right? So if you do think a throw is coming, in general, the, the math is not worth it to tech a throw. Occasionally, maybe if you're like low on life and you have a read, it can be worth it occasionally, but I think you have much more consistent options to deal with throw that cover other different options as well. Well, right you can do like a late dp that gives you more damage it also doesn't give them gray health and it punishes the throw right so if you have a read on the throw do something that actually punishes it instead of giving you a neutral situation the other thing is you can just mash throws you can literally just mash throws in this game there is throw protection so right hitman's gonna do a sick grab here but you can just mash out of the throw so um, choose one of those options instead. Again, uh, defensive teching is very bad because what a lot of people will do is they'll run up and they'll try to bait a throw. And so take, for example, I'm trying to grab the Hitman. Hitman just punishes me and I just died because I tried to tech a throw, right? This is like 500 plus damage, could have done more. Pretty much don't tech throws unless you're like literally on your, your last life. Defensive throws do have some merit. So for example, like after a jumping, your fastest thing to throw out is actually a throw. So like instead of trying to tech their throw, you can do like a reversal throw to kind of like catch them trying to like walk back or be a DP or something like that. There, I think a throw can be okay. Also, if your character like a uh, swift master that has really fast buttons, if you tech a throw, you're at advantage. Maybe you want to throw a little bit more. So one of the scariest things in this game is Hitman with Awakening. So I don't get why some people will just run up and throw a Hitman and just give him a free Awakening. Makes no sense to me. Now you're dealing with a Hitman that has great health for conversion and they're in Awakening, which makes him exponentially better of a character. You also have to be very considerate of like when you go for a throw, right? Those are really good, especially when you're in the corner because you still get like a, a decent knockdown situation, right? You can get a meaty, you can, uh, you can kind of stuff them out. It's also really good, like, let's say they're not even close to awakening, right? So, like, they're in this health range, and you can, like, you know, trick them into doing something that's a little more, like, risky. Like, you, you can start to open them up to, you know, want to DP or want to mash so you can get your damage in, right? Oftentimes, if your character without mix-up, you're, you're often better going for the, the being the DP, being the mashing. Try to take advantage of your opponent's bad habits, and if they're not mashing, then you can, you know, start to go for the guard break. Instead of going for a throw that gives 75 damage and gives you no Oki. Okay. Another defense option I want to talk about a lot is backdash. So people aren't doing backdashes because they don't have invincibility. What they do have is frame one airborne. So in a certain situation, let's say Hitman Oki. And the Hitman like spaces his Oki out like this, right? That looks pretty annoying to deal with, as I'm sure you guys have been hit by this. You can just backdash out of the way. A lot of like misspaced things are really good to backdash out of. Even certain things like after a jump in that's like spaced out. You can kind of like uh, risk free backdash. And if even if they hit you, it's like you're airborne and the conversion can be a little tricky. Um, sometimes like I'll, I'll backdash in, on purpose to take a hit in order to like put me into awakening. Another really good spot is like even if you're just mid screen, let's say Hitman is just going for a uh, like a normal like low mix-up or something right yeah 
And so you get that like weird pop up and it can mess up the combo. But you do have to practice the timing a little bit. There's not a very good uh, reversal buffer for the back dash. Next thing we need to talk about is guard cancel. So guard cancel is very good. A lot of people aren't using it at the right point. They'll try to like guard cancel like a 2A, which I think is like never worth it because they can just block pretty easily. But there's certain points where guard cancels are basically guaranteed, right? So for Hitman, you can just react to the the 5M and you see how it says punish there. Basically don't guard cancel a jump in, an A button or a situation where the opponent can block. Wait for your opportunity to guard cancel. You know, throw is not that scary in this game and as long as they don't have a scary mix up, you can afford the block for a little bit. A couple things to keep in mind, conversion can be used on reaction to guard cancel. On offense, you know, make sure to use that. But on defense, if you see they have conversion, don't use your guard cancel right away. Either wait for the conversion to run out or um, test their reactions because it is a little tricky to do. Another thing you do is a DP it can be done after like B normals or S normals, but it's a little tricky. You have to like get the timing just right. Reactions have to be really on point and it has to be in a situation where the next move in your strings not already coming out. So you don't have to worry about it too often, but it is an option and really, really strong players will be able to use it sometimes. Another really good spot to guard cancel is after they use like a, uh, like a move like this, right? So let's say I do this. That's not going to work, right? But some characters have a larger guard cancel window. So let's say I'm playing Ghost Blade. And okay. So whenever you guard cancel a magic skill, you always have great health. And as great health is super important because after conversion, you're generally at advantage, right? Which means that someone like Ghost Blade can do something like 6S conversion and basically get control of the match again. Most characters can do this and they have a move that they can specifically use with conversion to kind of take advantage of the post guard cancel situation. If you guard cancel early though, right? I don't, I can't do 6S conversion. I have to you know, just kind of play honest neutral. Dishonest neutral, better than honest neutral. <laughs> Speaking of white life, right? You always get white life after blocking a magic skill, right? So DPs are included. And what a lot of people aren't doing right now is they're not using that white life in order to optimize their reversal punishes, right? So an example, you know, punish might look something like this. That's pretty optimal, right? You get about like 364. So here's an example of me also punishing this, but using the white life. Literally 150 more damage than the other version I did. Use conversions in your DP punish if you can. Uh, most characters can, so make sure you learn that. All right, so a couple more basic tips, but seriously, guys, I have a uh, beginner guide, and there's some very basic stuff here, such as using the guard bun. I've literally played in grand finals of tournaments where people are not using their guard bun. I don't understand. You should always be using the guard bun in matches you know some people try to do it only against some characters or some situations i always do this guard button anytime i'm guarding there's no disadvantage to it don't even like dedicate mental processing power to hey should i use the guard button here or should i not just make it a habit always use the guard button you know guard button can be used in neutral so like especially against characters like lost warrior i'm always dashing and then guarding just looks cleaner and you can also like adjust your spacing a lot quicker using the guard button really good for fussy wars all right, so some of the more niche things, so like option selects, right? So the, the idea behind this option select is against characters like Hitman or Striker, uh, what you can do is a safe jump, and if the safe jump whiffs, you get a roll. And basically you input your jump normal, and then you input a roll, and if it's hit or blocked, you don't get your roll to come out, right? So Striker has a basically a plus on block DP, never want to block it. So if you're going for safe jump pressure against Striker, you want to make sure that you don't block the DP. That's where this roll OS comes into play. All right, DP didn't come out there that time. And that time it did. So that's kind of the idea. And then obviously if she was the DP, you just murder her, right? Also works against Hitman. It's really good if Hitman's in Awakening because you make the DP whiff and then you punish before the follow-up comes out. So yeah, I think it's I think it's worth learning. The other thing I would say is um, you should learn about fuzzies, right? And a fuzzies exist in every game. So Enchantress, really scary character, has a command grab that leads basically into death, right? Never want to take the command grab. She can also, you know, just go into a, a block string. So the first recording will be the block string 
and a second block swing will be me doing a jump in into a command grab, right? So you can actually block against both of these. And what I recommend doing is um, always hold the guard button and then just go down back, up back, and then down back again. And so you, you actually see a jump input came out. And so let's test this against the uh, the other recording, the same exact input. And you see how a jump came out, right? This is what's called a fuzzy jump and against characters like Grappler or Enchantress, um, that's really important. You can apply the same concept to uh, like delaying a button, right? It's basically what you're doing is you're not jumping immediately, you're delaying your jump. You're basically doing the same thing with a button in this case, right? So Hitman kind of has this like mix up, I guess you could say, where he'll do 6S and the 6MS, right? If you mash here, you get counter hit and then you just die. However, if you don't mash, he can just continue pressure, right? He can get you in the block infinite. You don't want either of those things to happen, right? So basically what I'm doing is that every time I see the uh, 6S, I'm doing a delayed button. So I did the delay button there. And then my delay button actually came out when he didn't cancel in the 6MS. And I was able to uh, stop the stop the follow up, right? That's called a fuzzy mash and it's pretty useful in any matchup. You just have to be very creative with your uh, application, right? So let's say I don't know whether this Hitman player is going to DP or not, right? So I could do 2A into 2A, but I get hit, right? But you actually can delay your second 2A so that it blocks the immediate reversal DP. And see, you see how the uh, the second A actually was pressed, but it didn't come out because I, I did a microwave or I did a fuzzy mesh on offense here. And if they're just blocking, it looks like that. Obviously, characters have different like speeds of DPs. Adjust your timing depending on the character. But you can also use this application offensively, microwaving to bait out something specific and then, you know, following up. Another example, right? You can do this and then you can do a delay overhead, right? The same exact sequence will also beat uh, someone mashing DP. Right, and you, you see I'm actually holding up, but uh, that doesn't come out because I'm already guarding the uh, guarding the DP. The last thing I want to talk about is your mentality. Fighting games are like 50% mental, but no one dedicates like 50% of their time working on mentality, right? If you really truly want to get good at fighting games or even this game, you, you have to dedicate some amount of time to, you know, your mental, which is, you know, making sure you, you optimize your life in order to play your best and making sure that you don't let your ego get in the way of your own improvement and so many other things. But I'm not going to do a whole video on this. This just this applies to life in general, but you know, make Make sure you look after your mental make sure you really focus on it because it can make a huge improvement in getting better at fighting games it's really important make sure you're constantly learning the amount of people that i see is just like mindlessly grinding rank not learning anything and then wondering why they don't get better you know deliberate practice making sure that you are always focused on learning something new from each session that you play can really maximize your time playing the game and kind of kickstart your your improvement so don't ignore the mental side of things as well all right guys with that being said hey i hope you guys enjoyed this my goal is to get the level of dnf play to really high level because you know arc rebo is coming up and we're gonna have to contend against korean players japanese players etc etc and uh higher level we get everyone the better prepared we'll be so uh yeah like share subscribe that sort of thing let's all get good dnf <laughs> Leave a comment down below if there's, uh, you know, some advanced tip that you also think is worth mentioning. And I'll see you guys in the next one. Take care.